Hello everyone, I'm back again with another Jake's Metal Chat. This is episode 40. Did one last night with Frozen Soul, of course. Um, I had a message that my guest was in. Probably left again, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that song was a bit on the dance side of it. Yeah. Oh, he's there. Oh, right, before I let him in, um, yeah, I am going to leave the top is my uh, Perisess um, portrait from 2013, I believe. Yeah, I was in the top. Let's get some things out beforehand. Just listening to uh, Men Menstrual Envy by Sanguis Sugarbog. And not get enough of those those guys at the moment. And not get enough. Um, anyway, the guest I have now, he, yeah, he's more on the folk side of music now, but he used to be in a metal band, so that's why I got him on here today to talk about what he's doing now and what he was doing before. And um, yeah, let's get on with it. Get him in. Just gonna get his uh, website up so we can talk about his albums. It is recording on his recording. Hello. 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 How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you doing? All right. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Let me just go full screen. Yeah. Can you yeah. see me all right? Hear me okay? Yep. All good on my end. Brilliant. Brilliant. Good to speak to you. And you. And you, because I've been <laughs> watching a lot of your... Sorry, that's something which was just playing in the background. <laughs> I, I, I've been watching a lot of your uh, home concerts, and I got the 2020 shirt. Yeah. <laughs> of course, been wearing that, and... Uh, yeah. Well, Brilliant. I'll just get you on here because of one certain aspect. Welcome to Jake's Metal Chat. This is episode 40. <laughs> Episode 40. Episode 40. Wow. I've been there doing this since May last year. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be a year soon. Soon, yeah, soon. next month. Yeah. I'd just say soon. <laughs> <laughs> soon. And uh, well, it's, I've been looking outside here in Bristol. It's a lovely day out, so I'm going to go for a walk after we're, we've wrapped up and all that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what's, my, my dog will be needing to walk too afterwards. So yeah, yeah, that's good. nice, nice day here too. Yeah, and that's um, you're in. Uh, is it Cornwall? No, no, I was I was born down in Cornwall. Born in but Cornwall. I live, yeah, I live in Brighton. So Brighton. Yeah, yeah, right on the south coast. What south coast? Uh, near the near the sea and everything. Yeah, I can look out the window and see the sea, which is lovely. That's brilliant. Well, you can do that with Cornwall as well. You can see water and oh yeah. Yeah. I've been there a lot. I've got family down there. Oh, have you? All ah, right. They live in Lou. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we lived in Falmouth. So, Falmouth, yeah. yeah. And um, my mates got married in um, St. Ives two years ago. Oh, right. Ah. Nearly two years ago. Yeah. So you're going to suit in May. Yeah. Yeah. It's really yeah. Nice. Wearing a suit in May is a bit hot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's sunny. I forgot my sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Yeah. here's my guest, people. His name is, well, he's, his real name's Dave Smith. Yeah. <laughs> but he goes by Dave the Bard. But I know, I, I said earlier, boy, what you want, he's into it. He's, he plays more folk music nowadays. But the reason I want him on, because he used to play drums in a metal band. There you go, I'm Dave the Bard now. I did, I did. And that's what and that's one of the main things we will be talking about this afternoon. I was gonna say evening, but the guests I had were over in Texas yesterday. Ah, uh, right, okay. Yeah. And it was the afternoon for them and it was the evening for me. I was just like, hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so um yeah, again, welcome. Actually good to talk to you because yeah, everyone's typing comments on your 
home concert, so you don't get to say hello to everybody. That's right. Because you've got everyone yes. from the UK, Australia, New Zealand, America, because you've travelled all over the place. Yeah, those those house concerts have been brilliant, I've got to say. And but but the comments, you know, when you've got six hundred to a thousand people watching you live on Facebook, they fly past. You know, I, I can't keep up with them. Uh, so <laughs> I'm always trying to be like, who's do, who's saying what? Who's putting green hearts? Who's putting trees? Yeah. Who's singing the chorus? Yeah. Who's who's doing like a what are you gonna clap emoji or something? Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Obviously, we've all been stuck in this pandemic. I really don't want to talk too much about it. Hopefully, for the next chats, I won't talk too much about the pandemic, but we've all been stuck in it. No gigs, no festivals, not really yeah. meeting up with people. Well, now you can, a certain number. I mean, you had the house concerts, obviously. I'm guessing that's been a big help. It has. Um, I... I realised quite early on that um, that that streamed live concerts, I don't that can never contain the energy of a live show of actually being there in front of someone on a stage in the room with that kind of stuff going on. It can't rep replicate that. And a few some about ten years ago, I did a little tour of house concerts where I said, if you can get fifteen of your mates together. Um, I'll come to your house and give you a gig. You know, it was when I was first starting out. Actually, probably longer than fifteen years ago. It was a while, it was a while ago. Um, I was just starting out, you know, and um, and I got a really good response for it. And I did a, a week's tour of just touring the country, going to someone's house and playing a completely acoustic set in what I thought would be their living room. But people really went to town and they kind of like, you know, got barbecues going, they got the neighbours round and, you know, and it was a really good thing. And I thought, well, I might be able to replicate that, a kind of really informal house concert where I come to your house via Facebook Live and we just play music to a camera like I'm sitting in your living room. That might work. Because the, the added thing to that, and I know the old comments go past pretty quickly, but some of them catch your eye and you can actually engage people watching you. Are you getting a bit of a... Oh, there's a bit of an echo there. No, no. No? No, oh, okay. No okay. I'm getting an echo. Okay. <laughs> All good. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so you could engage people in the moment. Well, you can't do that a live show yeah. in a conference hall you know you, you you're very separated from your audience so that was a really good kind of byproduct of it and i thought well let's do it free as well let's just do it free for donations we'll go back to busking <laughs> you know busking. which is what yeah, yeah. and um it, it, it you know people have been really generous and and you know they've appreciated what i've been doing i've been doing that so it's been a very much a give and take kind of thing and it has kept the wolf from the door this year those like what well, is one of the things that has managed to you know keep us playing paying the mortgage and the bills and all those kinds of things so you know it's been very much a, a, a very much a kind of mutually beneficial arrangement you know and the people who can't afford it still get a gig and the people who can afford it can pop something in the tip jars and mouth smallies yeah. and it's worked out okay yeah worked out yeah perfectly. and uh, it's been fun because I, I just thought hmm i've been listening to this man for quite a while now for a long time because the first song i heard was noon of the solstice that's the very yeah. first one i heard and just how it starts off was like this is nice. I can just walk in the woods. In general, put your music on, and I'll just feel at ease. Yeah, yeah. It's that sort of music. Well, it, it is folk music, and that's what I was taught when I was a kid. You know, I was taught Irish folk music when I was eight years old by a, um, an Irish folk musician. Um, but it was and it was acoustic. And then, obviously, when I got to my teenage years and my 20s and 30s you know well certainly my teenage years and pre-teenage years as well I was totally into rock music and I found that because I was taught Irish folk music and I was taught acoustic guitar when it when someone put a Stratocaster in my hands 
I couldn't I couldn't really play it properly. I, my hands were built and my my instincts were built to acoustic. And so I found yeah. I couldn't really play the electric guitar. But I had a, I, because of the way I was taught my guitar, which was by ear, I reckon I, that's why I got this a, a bit of a natural rhythm. And I found that I could play drums. So that so yeah. so during my rock and heavy metal band days, um, I went down the route of the drummer. Um, and I was one of those drummers that, uh, you know, although I was at the back behind everybody, um, my, my heroes in the drum scenes were Eric Carr of Kiss, uh, Tommy Lee of Motley Crue, you know, drummers that you, that drew the eye, even though there was the guitar player there and the vocalist and the bass player, the drummer was doing something. He was doing, he was drumming and then he would lift his hands up and twirl the stick or throw a stick up in the air and catch it. And, and, and the drummer became part of the show as well. And, you know, I'm far too much of a tart on stage to just sit <laughs> in the back and drum quietly away. So, so yeah, so that's, so I brought that kind of, I wanted that showmanship to be brought to the drums as well. Yeah. yeah, and uh, obviously we're going to get into when you were playing drums in your metal band, which obviously I was going to ask, where did your music journey begin? Obviously you grew up playing Irish folk and then yeah, that, and I got into metal. And well, how did you meet the guys from the band? Sure, okay. Um, I I was weaned on, on country and acoustic music by my mum and dad really my dad was a fan of uh, of the rolling stones which yeah. was kind of cool you know but he he was also very much into john denver and all these kind of you know um johnny cash um those kinds of mu acoustic musicians um but and this i'm i'm not young jake i'm not a youngster i, right? I know you're not so, a young man <laughs> <laughs> so this is so we're going to have to go oh, you're 21 time a little here you know and um and it, it was it was seeing the bands like t-rex the sweet slade on top of the pops when i was a kid particularly the sweet um they you know if you look at sweet the, the blockbuster hellraiser and all that kind of stuff action they 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 had some great riffs but they were a glam band essentially and I, and I kind of in my back of my head i thought that's what i like but that's not quite what it is i always wanted to be brian Connolly of the sweet you know um but it was when i heard um paper plane by status quo uh oh, it's got a riff. If, if any, I don't know if any, how your your age demographic of your your uh, YouTube videos are, but um, after this, after this, go and find Paper Plane by Status Quo. It's got a killer riff. I think I've heard it. I might have heard it at some point, but then it, just look it up after this. Like, Have a look. Know. Yeah, look it up after this because Quo probably to your generation is the in the army now. It's a bit poppy in that. But when they started out, they were a kick-ass rock and roll band. Status Quo, <laughs> and um, and so it was the Quo that got me. And I suddenly thought that's what I like. And then I then of course punk arrived, um, right. and the, and, the, and the Pistols and the Damned yeah. and stuff. You know, and I and I grew up through through those three years at school with punk, and that changed everything. Really, that changed everything, and it's still influencing metal now. With you know, yeah. very much, um, and uh, and I remember having conversations with uh, when I was at school with some of the kind of older rockers in, in the couple of years above me. Now they their idea of rock music was Zeppelin and Deep Purple. And rainbow yeah and when when i used to walk around with my acdc patches on the back of my denim jacket they <laughs> they would literally say to me are oh, these new bands you know they're, they're not they're not deep purple or led zeppelin you know they're not going to last these new bands and it's funny when you think that at some point like for me acdc was a new band you know <laughs> <laughs> a new band when you were growing up yeah Exactly. They're yeah. one of the biggest bands, not biggest bands still. Absolutely. And so, so throughout my kind of time, you know, Black Sabbath, um, Sabbath. Rush, um, you know, and, and a lot of bands used to play the Brighton Centre back in those days as well. I mean, obviously Motorhead were around, you know, all these, all those bands were, were 
I would I would be literally seeing a band every other week at the Brighton Centre or the Dome or somewhere. Um, mm. And it was a very, very exciting time. And <clears throat> a few of my mates at school, they could play guitar and we, we had school kind of school bands, you know, school rock bands, mm -hmm. but they didn't really get anywhere. And it was only in my kind of sort of early 20s that I, I, I got into a band called Targa, T-A-R-G-A, -A, mm -hmm. um, named after the Porsche, a Porsche oh, Targa, gosh. yeah. And uh, oh. and at that time, hair metal was around, so there was there was all of oh. the Dokken and you know Pet Poison, Motley, Motley Crue, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, Warrant, you know, all of those bands were were popular. Um, but also, thrash metal had really just started. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so. So Kill Em All and Ride the Lightning had just come out. I think the first album, Armed and Dangerous by, by Anthrax, was there. Hell Awaits yeah. from Slayer all came out about that time. Really early kind of thrash. And that's where my heart was in thrash metal. But the other guys in the band, they, they liked the melodic rock music. So if you listen to Targa, we, we used to call it melodic thrash. <laughs> <laughs> Melodic thrash. It, yeah, I, I, I have heard the demo, which is it just says demo eighty six on the metal archives. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, of and, course, and you can hear that there's there's definitely there's definitely hard yeah. heavy metal in there. So you know, I, I wrote that song called Witchfinder. I wrote that one. Nice. Yeah, and um, it's a great song. I love it. Cool. We had a so we had a Japanese female vocalist called Reiko, um, and she was fantastic. She had an absolute screaming vocal range, and and I I I bought myself a Premier Black Shadow drum kit, Resonator drum kit. It was a double bass drum kit because if you were in a rock band at that time, you had to have two bass drums, you bass know, drums. with with loads and loads of toms, and you know loads of cymbals and that kind of stuff and a big Ludwig Colosseum snare drum. It was a lovely, lovely drum kit. And, um, you know, we, we made some demos. Uh, our demo, one of our demos was produced by Paul Quinn, the guitarist of Saxon. That's right. Uh, yeah. Um, because Reiko was best friend with his wife, uh, who was Japanese. So that's how we got a, a, a little, kit, you know, foot in the door um with yeah. professional musicians and saxon you know they they were they they are not to be sneezed at they they were a great band yeah, i've seen um, i saw saxon at download 2016 yeah. just before i maiden came on because i maiden weren't going to come on and so every band on the other stages were done with their sets once saxon was done in the smaller tent maiden yeah. came on yeah i was in that tent with you somewhere uh, I, I, me, and, me and my mate had a good spot for to see Boso on the radio. So I was like, Saxon's over there, Maiden's there. So yeah. instead of going in the tent, yeah, yeah. get the get out again. So you were there, awesome. Yeah, I was there. I was there. So, so, so Paul Quinn. Damn, I could have met you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Paul Quinn produced our demo, um, which was fabulous, and we. We got a, um, we actually ended up getting, we didn't get huge, we didn't get very far really, um, but we did get a headline slot at the old Marquee Club. And I oh, think, that uh, is, yeah, that was, however, unfortunately, the guitar player at the time decided, or one of the guitar players decided, actually, do you know what, I want to be in that band over there. So he left and we never got to play that gig at the Marquee which is such a shame. That would have been something to be able to say to you to play that same stage as like Jim Morrison yeah. at the Thors and Zeppelin and all those other bands that played the Marquee Club. Didn't that happen. Been great. Exactly. That would have been great because well, obviously what you what you play now is completely different from what you played in Tarka. Tarka. Yeah. And uh, I actually got a picture of, of you behind the drum kit on the archives page. Yeah. Oh, now that was from a different band. That was from a band called uh, Stride. That was a school band. 
Yeah. yeah. But still, I thought I'd show it because. Yeah, yeah. Oh, damn! I should have. I should have because they because we look, Targa looked very different to that. We were. But I used to like have hard rock hairspray back comb my hair, so it was like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That, that was you in a different band. That was me in a different band. Yes, yes. Um, I just thought I'd show it because I'm just like, I don't yeah. know if you've seen any old pictures of himself in a long time. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have got pictures of me in ta in um, in Targa, and we looked very different to that. I can yeah, tell so you. I think I've seen some pictures somewhere. Yeah. There's, oh, there's a YouTube video. YouTube, YouTube, fucking how YouTube video. We're gonna have yeah. to pause them. I don't want the music to play. <laughs> but. Uh, oh, that's it. There you go. That's which it. Which one are you? Can you point yourself out? I am the one second in from the left by the guy in the cerise kind of very nice pink long coat. That, that is me. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't know what you look like before, there he is with teased yeah. fucking back boomed hair. <laughs> that that is Targa with Rayco yeah. and yeah, the, yeah. The only song, Witchfinder, which is very brash, heavy metal. You know, yeah. all mixed, but and hearing you play the drums on it, it's like, wow, he's he's a really great drummer. <laughs> I love playing the drums. You know, I think if I wasn't a drummer when I was growing up, I might have ended up in trouble. Do you know what I mean? I think I, I, all of my aggression that I grew up with, like every teenager get has that kind of angst, don't they? And and I if I, whenever I felt that I just went and sat behind my drum kit and bashed the hell out of them for like an hour, and then I felt a lot better. <laughs> yeah, a lot better after that. Yeah. And there you go. That was it. And then obviously somewhere down the line you stopped playing metal and got back to what you were doing when you were well a lot younger before that those days. Yeah. But do you still love metal music today? Do you still oh, love it? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, it, 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 like I say, I, I would be at download with everybody in the mud. You know, mm -hmm. um, though that weekend to me is just a weekend where I can just really engage my my love of rock music and heavy metal, you know. And, and, and again, because all the aggression is in the music, Metalheads are lovely folk, aren't they? You know, yeah. it, it, all of the anger and the uh, is in the music. So, you know, when people are in mosh pits and they fall down, it's kind of like, whoa, you know, and they'll help people pick up. And, you know, it's a really lovely atmosphere. And, and, and yeah, I love it to pieces. And I, I still, you know, adore uh, the sound of a really well played distorted guitar you know um yeah yeah still still a huge love of mine in fact i probably play pl listen to more metal than i do folk music um i still you know i will still listen to far more rock and metal than i will folk i play folk you but play I folk. Listen, yeah i play folk and i think if you listen carefully to my music even though it's folk music there are songs that you can still hear the influence that, that actually, hold on a minute, it's bloke, you know, he, he's a bit of a rock fan. He's, it, this isn't like, you know, it, there's elements of, of rock still in there, like in songs like Sabbath, Spirit of Albion, you know, they've, yeah. they've, they've definitely got um, that kind of element of, of rock music within them. Oh, yeah, yeah. De definitely. I can hear the rock metal yeah. influence, even though it's folk music, especially with one song that you do. Ragga Tagga Gypsy. Yeah. Yeah. Very bouncy number. Yeah. It sounds like it sounds like it sounds like a it sounds like if the dropkick Murphys did that as well. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. They, they made it into a punk song. And there's of course there's quite a big crossover in there with folk metal now, you know, um Elevity and, and bands like that. You know, there's there's yeah, quite a lot of influence of folk music in yeah. Sure, yeah, there you go. In 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 heavy in metal these days. And um and it's they are they are i think very obvious bedfellows because folk music if you go back far enough to the 60s 
the, the folk music then was that generation's punk. You know, it was that generation's anti-establishment, anti-government, you know, songs about protest and striking and all those things that were going on at the time. Folk music's roots are within the people. You know, then it's not in some higher government or capitalism. It's, it's right in the roots of the people. And so when punk came along, that was my generation's folk music, you know, because it was it was that. And I still think, you know, that that and I think that that folk music and heavy metal do sit really well together and 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 a really well played fiddle jig. A well played fiddle. And, and let's face it, you go back to the, the, the early, the late 70s, early 80s, and you listen to some Thin Lizzy like from the Black Rose album. Um, and of course, Thin Lizzy with Phil Lynott being Irish, you know, you can hear every now and again, they'll go into an Irish jig on an electric guitar and it sounds cracking. It's just yeah, absolutely yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, I've heard some songs where you just, what you just said, I've heard that sort of jig on the guitar and it, it just yeah, works. It does, works brilliantly. Yeah, it works. and I was trying to find your albums as well. I've got them here on the Pagan Music, Iron Camp, Pagan Music, because it's very pagan. Yeah. And uh, obviously the album was on about that has Haggard, Haggard Gypsy is that one. Hans Apprentice. Yeah, that's it. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's your first one. That was my debut solo album. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Back in 2002, 2003. Feels like 2002, some 2002, 2003. We'll say yeah. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> Something like that, because you've done a lot of albums after that, and obviously a lot. There's a lot of albums on there. We'll talk about. Hopefully, talk about <laughs> if we get the chance. But how long did that take to record? What Hearns Apprentice? Yeah. Um, it, it took a little while that one because I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, I all of all of my albums are recorded in my home studio. I never go to professional studios. They are, you know, I mean, in the production of those, they're proper punk, you know, they're self-produced albums. But I wanted to make it, you know, I, I could see that I was going to do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't want to be ashamed of anything that I'd ever recorded. So whatever I put out, put out I knew I wanted to live with forever. Um, so, so Hearn's Apprentice had a few short, a few full starts where I could, I was playing with different recording equipment, home recording equipment, and I finally settled on um, uh, on a program called Logic, which at the time Apple no, didn't own Logic. Uh, it was just a PC program. I had I had Logic. I had a Dell computer and a Stag microphone, and that was it. That was what that album was recorded on, and um, it was recorded in our front bedroom in our house. Um, oh, and man. and I'm still happy with it. You know, you I, you know, I listen to it now. I think, oh, maybe I'd have done it a little differently, but I'm not. There's nothing on there that I'm at all ashamed of or have any problem with. And uh, you know, but because it it was um, because it was the first one, like I say, there was a number of false starts with that one. But by the time I got to the Hills They Are Hollow, the second album, um, the, I started to know what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. So the purple one there. Yeah. So by the time I got to the Hills They Are Hollow, I had, I had discovered sampled instruments and MIDI and all kinds of things like that. So that's why there's lots of orchestration on there and Lady of the Silver yeah. Wheel and all of those things. Um, so I, I think if you listen, there's a big jump between Hearn's Apprentice and Hillsdale Hollow. I think Hillsdale Hollow is probably the first album of me doing what I do. Um, whereas the Hearn's Apprentice is me, is, is, is the Dave that played around campfires, you know, with his friends at Pagan Camps. That's what Hearn's Apprentice is. Whereas I think that you can hear the production value really goes up on Hillsdale Hollow. Oh uh, yeah, because like, I have heard it. It's 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 magical. I've got to say that. Thank you. Same with um, Spirit of Albion. That's a very 
fun, very fun albums, well, very magical album. I think that's the one Noon the Solstice is on. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. The one then obviously the Sun Spit of Albion and I remember all the other bloody songs on there. Yeah, yeah. Because so, you got so many songs thinking, oh, that one's on this album. It's like, Cauldron Bond's on that one. Nope, it's on Cauldron Bond. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> and obviously the song that I, would, that I heard when I went to Ashton Court here in Bristol, I just found a nice log to sit on and I put on Green and Grey. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. That's such a brilliant song. And I yeah. couldn't help but sing to it. Damn, damn the people who hear it. Is like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'll, I'll sing it aloud. I don't care. Nice, nice. And uh, obviously, one mention all the arms. I don't know. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, the hills they are hollow. Obviously, I think you got the gist of it by then. The recording, the album. So, because mm. the first one, like you said, took a little longer. Because it's like, what am I doing? Well, yeah, exactly. You know, what I'm doing here. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, all these buttons on this computer program, I have no idea what I'm doing. So, yeah, it was a bit of a learning curve. Like, God damn it, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, obviously, what else, what else have we got? Here we got, obviously, I said Spirit of Albion, Holden Born, Tales from the Pro Man. Yeah. That one next to Holden Born. Yeah. I'm just gonna get them all up. My screen's a bit bright, so you might not see them all. Yeah, we you, you can see it. You can't you can't see the white ones as well, but you can see them. The white ones. These are very colourful ones. Isn't it? Mm. Sab, Sab it. That's a nice cover. I, I do like that. Yeah. The uh, yeah. So if you want to buy this stuff, I was just gonna ask him about merch, but now I'm just showing it. Make <laughs> the music. Well, they're all on. They're all on Spotify, Apple Music, all the usual sort of download and streaming services. So, yeah, pop on there and have a listen. If if and if anyone wants to find out a bit more about what I do, the website is paganmusic.co.uk. That's the hub of all things Dave the Bard. You know, so yeah. No. Oh, obviously, when I'm not listening to metal, I'd be listening to folk music. Yeah. I'll put your music on. I'll put. Uh, Highland, Audruna, uh, Danheim. Uh, I, I, I listen to I listen to a lot of other folk musicians and bands and mm. name right now, but the main four of what the ones I just said. So. Yeah. And speaking of Audruna, you had Ina on your podcast. I did. Your podcast, and I just. Pull the hair out. That's good. <laughs> um, yeah, you had Einar Selvig from Wardruna, and obviously he got something in common with common as well with you. You both played in metal bands because he was in Golgoroth. Absolutely, yeah. The drummer. Yes. From 2000 to 2004 or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And now he's doing. Is a is like Nordic folk and all that, which I absolutely love because it's atmospheric. Mm. It just puts you in a trance, and so your music it just relaxes me. With yeah. metal, it relaxes me a lot, even a lot, a lot more. As everyone thinks, metal, oh, angry, you're angry all the time. No, I'm actually like this. No, I'm cheerful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, oh no, I'm I'm ecstatic. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, what? Talking to Einar. Sorry. I was like talking to Einar. Um, I, w- I I confess I was a little starstruck, to be honest with you, because um, you know I've got such a huge respect for his music and his path and what he's done and how he's walked that path, you know, from metal into into pagan. It's hard to even call it pagan folk, really. It's it's something else. Yeah. Isn't it? Um. And I and I've seen I just I've been I've watched them for a long time I've I've liked them since their first album came out, <clears throat> and 
and when he was just, you know, he, they've obviously now got a major record deal. I think that's the difference between Fitzraven, their last, their, their latest album. You can hear a difference in the quality, not in the quality, in, the, in the, there's an energy difference in the in the songs and stuff compared to the other one. They're still from the same root, but they've they've grown into something else, and and I really love it. And so, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a great fan of musicians who keep control of their music who walk their path, who don't just say, you know, I'm a musician, oh, I've got to get a record deal. You know, there's no need to get a record deal these mm -hmm. days. You know, I, I've not got, I would avoid a record deal at all cost, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with, with, with Spotify and Apple Music, you get worldwide distribution of your music. It's up, it's up to you as a musician to then get people to hear it and to like it. And, I, and I've watched Wardruna, I've watched other folk musicians as well who have walked that path to keep their own music under their control. Um, and I think Ina has done that more better than anybody, you know. Um, and I love the fact that he, he really walks his talk when it comes to his Nordic spiritual yeah. path. Um, yeah. And, and so, you know, all, when I when I was listening to him talk, I just thought, well, I, that's what I do. You know, if I want to if I want inspiration for a song, I will go out into the, 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 the moors of Dartmoor or something like that. And I will commune with the natural world and I will ask the spirits of that place to to speak to me. And I would step in the way of inspiration and then open those floodgates of of inspiration and and then get going on the song. And that's what he does. And it was just it was, you know, it's like I said to him, I said, you know, it's like talking to a brother from another mother, you know. That, that saying, brother from another mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's that's what he felt like to me, you know. Yeah, no, I was listening to that on Spotify, that episode, because I because I saw it posted on your page. I thought, oh, cool, I'll write a question and see if it gets jumbled up with similar questions, and there we go. Yeah. And heard it, and I was like, he just know he said so knowledgeable about the Nordic history and and all that, and I just thought I can I can I can I can just lay back on my bed, put put that episode on again, and just drift off the same way. Oh, that that was lovely. Yeah, yeah, that was a great interview, and also you know I love the fact that. Wardroon are playing events like uh, Wacken and uh, you yeah. know places like that you know so Wardroon are, are as a band are being you know taken to the hearts of people who love heavy metal music and and yeah. and if you listen to Wardroon there's not there's no metal in there at all mm -hmm. apart from the energy you know mm -hmm. I think you know you, when you the energy of the drums and the drones and everything else that's a similar kind of energy that you can feel within, you know, certain heavy metal songs, I think. So, yeah, you know, that's why. There's a lot of bands, like, going to, like, the, some doom bands and black metal bands, they tend to use a lot of drone or yeah. drone ambient, avant god sort of sounds. Yeah. You know, that level of atmosphere. And, uh, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do for my own solo throat project that I got because I got myself a frame drum, uh huh, 22 inch frame drum, which is, sounds beautiful. I got a bazooki, an Irish bazooki, it's black. I thought black, yes, that's the one, <laughs> and, uh, and a taco harper as well. I got one, I got a taco harper as well. Oh, have you? Yeah, and I'm, I'm still trying to figure out the damn tuning. Do it. Uh, I don't know the tuning. I need to ask. I know about tunings and stuff because I haven't got a clue. But bazooki, I was trying to think. I was like, "Oh, that's what D A D D. What? <laughs> it's just a bit confusing." Your, your bazooki. I, I know a bazooki tuning. I don't know about the others, but the bazooki tuning mostly used is G D A D. G D A D. Go. There's your Irish bazooki. Yeah. So the lowest yeah. string is G, D, A, D. Yeah. yeah, that's it. 
That's it. That's all he's doing. He's, you have to wait Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Back off, instrument. This is not your time. <laughs> yeah, this is not your time. Yeah, because I, I got it because I thought, well, because I'm in a folk metal band as well with my mate Alex. Alex Nuns, his name will come up a couple of times on live shows as well. His profile picture is him drinking from his horn. Yeah. Yeah, and my profile picture is with me, of me with Devin Townsend. Oh right, okay, yeah. I don't know if you heard Devin Townsend's music. I saw him at Download a couple of years ago. It might have been Download or Sonosphere. I can't remember which one it was. Some festival. Can't remember which one it was. I think it might have been Download. Sonosphere. He's played Download. Yeah. He played Bloodstock. Yeah. I think yeah. he played Vacuum before. I don't know. And I think he's played Hellfest. Yeah. Oh, amazing guitar player. Absolutely incredible. I, I love his music. Yeah. You, you can love his stuff, even if it's the metal stuff or the acoustic stuff. He can he can just make... He could probably make an album of him just making stupid noises. People will love it. Yeah. <laughs> I would. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's, and he's very down-to-earth as well. He's a very down-to-earth individual because I got a picture of him when he played Cardiff in... 2019, so that was the last time I saw him live. Adding the live stream stuff he's done as well, and of all that, so it's had time to see him on screen. But it's better to see him live because you just get that energy. You get the you get the energy in the music, and you get the energy from him because he's such a funny person. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Again, down to earth. After I had that picture of him on the profile, I just gave him a hug. Mm -hmm. I was like, you get a hug. <laughs> you get a hug because you. Yeah. 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 He's such an amazing musician. And every time you saw me, he kept putting his hand. I was like, you shake his hand. Oh, nice. So the, the meet and greet. Yeah. You know, you do these meet and greets with musicians like, mm. oh, buy a meet and greet. It's like 80, it's like 80 odd pounds. <laughs> okay. Mm. I'm fine. Ah. But no, I'd rather just see him walking around and hopefully they'll say hello. If not, then I'll just let them get on with their day. But um, yeah. I mean, I've only seen you, seen you on screen with the live concert, home concerts, but I'd love to actually see you live when this is all over. Yeah, I'll be getting back certainly on the road once, it's, uh, once I can, and I know that people can come in without any restrictions that's the thing i don't want to, I don't, i'm not keen on playing a gig that is socially distanced um no. I, I want people to be able to you know dance and sing and hug each other and everything else so i will be hitting the road at some point hopefully towards the end of the year okay. definitely definitely down at glastonbury assembly rooms um for a gig there uh, yeah, it's not I'll, too far not I'll too far to from bristol yeah not too I'll far bristol, from bristol. bristol yeah yeah bristol that'd be great yeah. So we've got some good places here in Bristol you can play. I'm trying to think now. Um, we've got lots of good rooms. I'm trying to think. we got, obviously, it's now changed to Bristol Beacon for obvious reasons. Um, I think we got, we, I think we've got like a couple of churches that can be used for um, mm -hmm. concert halls. Um, the exchange might work as well yeah, yeah i i have to be i have to be aware that the the catchment area of a gig has to be fairly big for me because i i'm not an, a big name in any stretch of the imagination so so if i play at glastonbury that will often often bring people in from bristol and south wales and that kind of area and so the other gig i play probably needs to be a, a fair way away but it'd be nice to play bristol at some point i know a lot yeah. of people in bristol in fact i was down there last week on wednesday at stanton drew oh no way <laughs> Yeah, just outside of Bristol last Wednesday, I was doing at the Stone Circle there. <laughs> oh, okay, I can not have seen you anyway. But uh, yeah, if I did, I would have been like, no, no, leave him alone, <laughs> leave him alone, leave him alone. Him a freak. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, but I'm a pagan. Please let me enjoy. <laughs> Before I show you my. Uh, I'll show you my folk metal band, band card. We got cards. 
I'm part of a pagan group here in Bristol. Right. We are called the West Country Heathens. Oh, okay. Yeah. We cover Bristol, Bath, and Somerset mainly. Mm hmm. And um, we got mainly had online moots, some online blots, and. Yeah, because we haven't been able to meet up because some are actually at high risk of getting you know what. Yeah. Yeah. So, we're not talking about that anymore. That can just we're not no. talking about we all know it exists. We we're all not... know it exists. Yeah. <laughs> I always have to ask every guest I've had, oh, this thing. How you been coping and blah blah blah. Mm, yeah. No, we're not talking about it anymore. Because it's done, it's done, and hopefully when everyone's vaccinated, we won't have to worry too much about it. Yeah, that's that would be nice, wouldn't it? Get back to That'd some kind nice. of well, let's get on some positive notes. This is my folk metal man. Whoa. You've As got one of those, you've got one of those logos that I can't read. I don't know if it's, <laughs> it's not that hard to read. Avente Aven Tail. Aven yeah. There you go. Aventail. Aventail. Nice. Yeah, that's the A V E N T A I L. Yeah, yeah. Heavy metal logos, some of them are just crazy. I look at there was a there was a proper hardcore metal festival up here in Brighton area. And 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 I, I caught a glimpse of um of the of the poster and it was like all of the names were spiky and everything else. And, and oh. I, I, I was like, what? I think it's age, mate. Honestly, it's just age. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is a mate of mine's one man band from He's from Holland originally, but he's moved to Germany. Yeah. There's Conifloor. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, wow. It's, I mean, it, there's it, no doubt in the music that they play. <laughs> it's a one man band, and that's like he's gone with because me and another mate of mine put on a gig at the Griffin here in Bristol. Nice place to drink. Now we've got a heavy metal record shop open. It's uh -huh. only up the road from it, yeah. on that same stretch of road. So, Buy some albums, go and have a point, but the Griffin's not open because it doesn't have a beer garden, so we can't go out. Yeah, won't be long. Won't be long. Won't be long until John's open again. But yeah, when that this was 2016, me and my mate put on a gig, and he was one of the bands because it was all one man bands mm -hmm. with their guitars, vocals, backing tracks, and drums and stuff like that. Mm. But you know, I don't think you really need any of that really when you play live, or do you? No, I don't. Um, I, I, when I record my albums, I multi-track. You know, I play all of the, I play all of the, you know, most of the instruments on the albums. Um, but when, but I always think that in, when it comes to folk uh, and acoustic music, you know, the song needs to be able to be played with just you and a voice. You're just just a guitar and voice or a mandolin and voice. And if if you can do that, then it's a good song. You know, if you can still get the energy with that. So when I play live, it's me, my instrument, and it's, but I do use a stomp box um, yep. when I play live. So that so that there's a thud, you know, there's a ding, ding, ding going on while while I play the instruments, which gives the people a little bit of of, of, of a percussive feel to the song so if they want to get up and dance they've got they've got a beat to dance to you know and uh but other than that me yeah, me the vocal guitar stomp box that's it that's all i use that's no it. no no backing tracks yeah because there are um i think there are some folk bands that might use like effects but so obviously they'll have like a laptop or something off the one side get yeah. someone to press it or they'll have it on stage with them, like Highland. They have their laptop on stage with all the atmospheric ambient sounds. Yeah. And then obviously you get the drums and then the vocals and then what any other instruments they may have. I'm not a great fan of backing tracks. I have to confess. Um, you know, I could have gone that route and I could have played along to my own backing tracks and it could have been a very full sound. But when I'm listening to a band, because I because I, because I'm a musician, I can I can tell when there's a backing track going on. And the moment I think, oh, what's that? Okay, there's no no one on that stage is playing that instrument right now. So that's coming through a backing track. And it, and the problem it does, it makes me think, well, how much of the rest of it is coming from a backing track? 
and how much am I actually hearing live? You know, so it, it, I'm not a fan of backing tracks. Uh, it, well, yeah, it's, their, it's their own, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've seen some bands where it's only just been two people on the stage and then using a drum machine. Yeah. So well, a drum machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Each to their own, as you say. But even just no guitar player, it's a vocalist playing the bass and a drummer. Yeah. And that works out because one of my favourite bands is called Monolithia and they're from Cornwall. Right. And it's, it's a, a guy and a guy and a girl. They play in the back, playing this band called Monolithia and it, the girl's the drummer and the vote and the, the bloke's the vocalist and the bassist. It's like I think they call themselves Black and Doom Metal or something. Right. <laughs> if I can find anything, I'll send it your way. Yeah. Obviously, it's, all not, it's not like the traditional heavy metal vocals where, like, like you know, like Bruce Dickinson or Ozzy Osbourne or Lemmy or I'm trying to think of others. Rob Halford, for example. Mm. Not it, what I listen to. I listen to a lot of death metal bands, so that's all the guttural stuff. Yeah. Yeah, got all screams stuff like that. So, but then I'll go back to ha Rob Halford thinking, I still can't sing like that. I, ju I just give up. You <laughs> <laughs> can't match his voice, well, you probably could. There are but, very few. There are very few people that can sing like Rob Halford, mate. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't hold him as a as a kind of benchmark. <laughs> he's he's way up there. He's got something like yeah, a. I, don't a, a it's like, I can do it. Voice. Yeah. I can do it. Nope. Yeah, yeah. Do it and they lose their voice. He's just like this. <laughs> mm. I win. <laughs> and uh, I don't other vocalists now, like Freddie Mercury, for example. No one can match his vocals. Not mm. really. Mm. He had a one of a kind voice. Yeah. So the most iconic heavy rock voice. You see, I would always go to Ronnie James Dio. Yes. Do you know what I mean? His his voice in Rainbow and in that you know Heaven and Hell for Black Sabbath and the like. I don't know. There aren't many people who can beat Ronnie James Dio as, as a kind of iconic heavy rock voice. You know. No, definitely not. I was hoping to see him in 2010, but sadly, yeah, passed away. And he was supposed um, to play Bloodstock that year. Well, what a loss. I, I did see, I saw Black Sabbath uh, on the Heaven and Hell tour with him. <clears throat> and um, it was just unbelievable. You know, because obviously, you know, I was a Black, I was a Sabbath fan with Ozzy. Um, my first Sabbath album was, was Never Say Die, on, which was their last album with Ozzy. But I kind of thought, oh, that's, that's Sabbath. And when I heard that Ozzy had been fired, I thought, oh, now what are they going to do? And then they said, oh, yeah, we've got Ronnie James Dio to come in as the vocalist of Black Sabbath. And I remember putting on Heaven and Hell and those opening chords of Neon Nights and then his vocal. And I just thought, it's OK, the world's going to be fine. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I had that same moment with uh, with ACDC at school. They were my favourite band, ACDC. And yeah. of course, Bob Scott. Scott. I, I saw Bon Scott with ACDC in 79 um, at the Brighton Centre. And it was it's probably my best gig I've ever seen still to this day. I absolutely loved every minute of it. And then, of course, he passed away. And, and, it, and then, then I heard that they'd got this other vocalist in and they very quickly brought out Back in Black within like a year. And I remember bringing it home, this Black album. And I, I, I just, I cannot tell you how much I loved ACDC at that time. They were the band for me and i thought and i hadn't heard anything from it there was no sneak previews i put it on my turntable big disc of vinyl picked up the needle put it on and those bells started and then the riff of hell's bell started and i and then they went into the song and then brian johnson started to sing in again and i just thought oh my god everything's <laughs> gonna be all right it's all gonna be okay <laughs> it's fine we're gonna be fine it's gonna it's, be fine. It's gonna yeah. be fine. <laughs> obviously, obviously, there's bands that didn't do that. 
I pulled Led Zeppelin. They couldn't replace Don Bonham. No, no. Because he was like, I get obviously I didn't think they one of a kind because he was probably just one of those one of a kind drummers. Because anyone heard the song Moby Dick? Yeah. <laughs> the drum solo on that is bonkers. Yeah, he had a very heavy left, heavy, heavy right foot. Oh, that's uh, my dog doorbell going. I think Kerry will get that. <laughs> Live podcasting. <laughs> Oscar, the dog, who we have Oscar, seen on, yeah. on a couple of streams. Yes, yeah. And he's very cute. I've got to say, very cute. He's chocolate. awesome. He, he's where I'm going to be taking him for a walk after this. We're going to go yeah, out. Yeah, we'll be. Yeah, and I was like, no, nah, I don't want to end now. I'll wait until about three o'clock. It's fine. We've got more <laughs> to talk about. Fire away, mate. Fire away. Yeah, so yeah. ACDC. I think I've got the Black Album still. I know I got, um, I think I got Highway to Hell in there somewhere. I'm going to have a look at my CDs, see what I still have. Yeah. yeah. I've got Motorhead, obviously. My favourite, Ace of Spades. That's just, that's just a killer album. It is. That's just... Uh, that, that was, a, I think, 1980, I think that was, wasn't it? Yeah, that was so, so, so Back in Black, um, you know... Um, Spades, uh... Ace of Spades. Yeah, there were there were a load of amazing. I mean, Iron Maiden would have had an album out that year as well. You know, it was just a crazy year for for rock music that year. Yeah. I like how Iron Maiden formed in formed on Christmas Day of nineteen seventy five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Merry Christmas, I guess. Yeah, I had a lovely experience at Download. The, the not not. Not the year with. Oh, it might have been the year with. Um, I made them play download a number of times, haven't they? You know, they're they're, they're old okay. school. Kind of, uh, I was I was queuing up with uh, the Loos, and this this young lady said to me, um, you know, I can't wait till I'm Maiden tonight. I said, no, me neither. And I must admit, I hadn't seen them for a number of years. And um, and she said, to you, have you seen them before? And I went, yeah. She said, when did you first see Iron Maiden? And I thought, oh God, I've got to say, I've got to say this thing, you know. Well, I, I saw them at a little club in Brighton called the Top Rank Suite um, before they, before their debut album came out, <laughs> playing with Praying Mantis, supporting, and it was nuts. I got the front row, and Dave Murray drank his can of Stella, and he handed me the can of Stella, and I finished it off. I put the can down my trousers. Got back home, I thought, God, I've got a can that was drunk from, from Dave Murray of Iron Maiden. So I put it on the side. I went off to, to college, came back. My mum had thrown the bloody can away. She cleaned up oh, my bed oh. and she thrown away this can. Oh, God. Oh, your mum for doing that. Shame <laughs> you. Some Iron Maiden memorabilia right there. I know. I mean, no one else would have believed me now. So you see this can? That the, Dave Murray's lips were around that in 1980 or whatever it was that we were. And, um, but but it, oh, yeah, yeah. it meant, a lot, meant a lot to me, never mind. Yeah, because um, obviously before Bruce Dickinson, they had Paul Diano on vocals. That's right. Is, is yeah. that who you saw them with? Yes, Paul Diano was the vocalist with his trilby hat on. And they were very punk, actually, when they first came out. Yeah, I, I were, were, were really in, into that punk. So, so when I saw them, they, there were a lot of punks in the audience because this would have been, I don't know, 79, 80, probably was, 70, I don't know. It was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago because I found... Yeah, them, and punk was still a thing. Yeah, punk still a thing. Because I found, I think I found that lot, like for you on the bar, and I think it was like 1979 that said on the YouTube title yeah 79 i think yeah. that was a london gig i'm not, I'm not entirely sure but, yeah um, yeah it would have been but yeah i made in that i will think probably people were thinking they're not gonna get big they're not gonna be a big band blah 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 well look where they are now well that all changed with with number of the beast in it you know the, um, the, the, the paul diana albums were great but they i think they got to a point where they thought if we want to step up another notch, we need a, a classic metal vocalist. And um, I think Brock Bruce Dickinson was in Samson at the time, wasn't he? He was called Bruce Bruce, and he was yeah. in a band called Samson, another new wave of heavy metal band. And I think he he kind of went up to to um, 
Um, what's the bass player's name? God, crikey, I've gone into Steve problems. Harris. Yeah, Steve Harris from said, you know, I want to, I want to sing for your band, and they looked at him and thought, wow, he would be great. And that was another yeah. moment sticking on Number of the Beast with it. I think the open, opening track was Invaders or something like that, and you just the yeah. difference in Iron Maiden from from Peace of Mind and Killers and Iron Maiden, those first three albums, and then Number of the Beast comes out and it's like, oh yeah, these guys are going to go stratospheric now. You know, they are absolutely going to go. Yeah, because they they played big arenas, they played festivals, and Bruce Dickinson has a a plane for fuck's sake. I know. He flew over download, didn't he? They flew over download. (laughs) (laughs) That's right, yeah. Um, I was like, yeah, I, the first time I saw him was 2007 and got to see him for a bit because obviously he's still being a kid at the time in that, mm. that year. I had to go to school the next day. So yeah. I was like, oh, I need to actually see him properly. And it was like, I think it was like 2013 or something. They played again. I was like, oh. yeah. And then 2016, again. Yeah, but they, oh, yeah, they, know, they know how to put on a show, don't they? Yes, there you go. So did you get that at download, did you? I got that at download 2011 in the yeah, video. Right. <laughs> I, thought, I don't really like the festival because of the distance, and sometimes I don't have a lot of my favourite bands that play, but I do like the dog. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I'll get yeah. the dog. So yeah, like, get the dog. <laughs> and yeah. Oh yeah, again, yeah, because all these they're thinking they were everyone's probably thinking that with I made and Judas Priest Motorhead and all that. So, oh, they're not gonna go anywhere. Well, look at the massive fan base they've got. Yes. Yes. The fan base, look look at how many people have bought in their shirts, their CDs, their vinyl, their tapes, the mugs and I don't know. Um the beer, because I got the road crew. American Powell that they released. Yeah, yeah. And, and of funny. course, you know, when 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 I was, you know, a lot younger, they they were just the bands that were out at the time. They were my slipknots. They were, you know, they were they were just Judas Priest was a was a little bit old, but they, to a lot of people they were still a new band. <clears throat> and and now of course they're classic rock. And I'm just, you know, and 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 they've got a whole generation of new fans and everything, which is just brilliant. You know, I bet they never thought that they would still be headlining festivals 40 years later. You know, years later, still doing festivals. Yeah, you know, what a, what an, well, 30 years, 30 years later. I don't know, 30, yeah, no, 40 years later, 50, crack 50, it. 50, whatever now. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and and. You know, in, in, in a lot of music, you're lucky if you last five, three albums and then people forget about you. But there's such a love of, of rock and metal as a genre by its fans. You know, it's almost a religion, you know. It's, all, it's almost a way of life, you know. Like, I must promote these bands. I must listen to these bands. I must tell people yeah. about these bands. That's what I do anyway, because I've also got a podcast and I need to finish my new one today, hopefully. Um, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I just and I and I'm always telling people, oh yeah, I checked out checked out this band recently, and they're like, oh, I'll check them out, and then people give me new bands, and like, okay, I'll check this band out. This is a really cool band. I'm going to start buying their stuff now. Yeah, yeah. I know too many bands. Yes, and of course now we have streaming. We can yeah, listen streaming. to anything at any time, anywhere. You know, and and, and um, I sometimes I look at all these new releases and go. I, I'm never going to be able to listen to all of these bands enough to learn the lyrics of their songs and do that kind of thing, you know? Um, yeah. yeah but what, like that, like, hmm, do I look? Can we try and learn this? Maybe later, then I forget. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I just forget about it and I'm like, oh crap, was I supposed to learn this? Yeah, because I learned, I learned Ace of Spades pretty quick. Not heard it. And obviously, rest in peace to Lemmy. Yeah. No longer yeah. on this earth. And same with uh, Fast Eddie, Animal, but, you know, all the guys from that album. Can't believe it. That's mental. And they're not <coughs> they were just, well, two of them died. In, well, Lemmy died in 2015, I think. 
I think Animal was the other one who died in 2015 as well, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then the Paris and he died like three years later, something like that. I think my, you know, Motorhead All Gone is, is you know, is one of those, but <coughs> I also <coughs> I also have that feeling about the Ramones because I, I absolutely loved the Ramones when I was, you know, back in the day. And, and you know, they're all gone apart from one now, you know, and it's oh, like, yeah. you know, I, I, and, and of course, Eddie Van Halen. Oh my God, Eddie Van Halen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like, you know, I, I saw Van Halen at uh, Monsters of Rock um, when oh. their last gig with their last gig here with uh, with um, Dave Lee Roth, and and I never got a ch I never got to see him with Sammy Hagar. I, I, I never, but I always thought one day I will, and then you know, then he goes and does that. You know, <laughs> How bloody inconsiderate of him. <laughs> 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 Oh dear. <laughs> the world is totally, it's like the whole world is against those who love rock and metal and they just want them off the face of the earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, I'm not going anywhere. I've still got music to record and write and write, record, write, record, write, record, play live, write, record, play live, yeah. play live, yeah. play live, get drunk with people. Because I still do that, not really. Actually, I do. I'm joking. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm. Well, because going back, because um, obviously I like, there's a lot of other bands I like. One called um, Ye Banished Pirateers. They're not metal, they're a pirate folk group. Yeah. Tom Swinton, and there's like 30 of them. Oh, wow. And we've been having all these drunken rehearsal Zooms with them. And like, one where everyone's on there and we're just hanging out with them. They've been a lot of fun. What are they called? Ye Banished over tears all oh, right i'll have a look I'll, I'll try and look them up yeah really great really great stuff and uh obviously they're on a record metal record label called napalm records and they're not a metal band in any way shape or form right but i think they're all like yeah we can, we can add a couple of these bands on i think it's all good like yeah yeah again folk and metal go very well together so you, you we, i could see you at a metal festival i was like yeah this works mm-hmm because there's Elvati over there, his David, his David Baldwin, like they say, the Jägermeister stage at yeah, Bloodstock. Yeah. And then there's Elvati just behind you on the main stage. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be, that'd be nice one day. <laughs> like Don't know who to watch. Dave the Bar first. <laughs> Dave the Bar first. Tim first. Then Elvati. Oh, crap, they finish. Yeah. yeah. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and on that note, Thank you very much for taking part in Jake's Metal Chat. It's you're, been fun. You've, you're very welcome, mate. And I will see you hopefully on Saturday night for another gig. Oh, I'll be, I'll be there with a nice uh, bottle of um, Hobgoblin IPA, most like. Bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. We'll have a party. Maybe like, I'll have some water. Like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, like, I'll, have a, I'll have a beer later. It's like, have yeah, a beer. Exactly. Yeah, I feel like I say, I forget my lyrics at the best of the times. I don't need any help for alcohol, you know. So, yeah. this is yeah. cauldron form and end up seeing something from Noon and Solstice. Yeah, yeah, but not be funny. It's like, this is this is green and gray, the moon of the Solstice. No, nope. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's beyond not the realm right. of possibility. <laughs> so if you want to find this stuff, even though I just we mentioned it earlier, go on Pagan Music if you're into it. As well as because metalheads do like folk, no metalheads out there don't like. Yeah. That like yeah. folk music. Find this stuff because um, obviously I'm, I, I downloaded all your albums on Spotify, so I'm going to just go which one, which one. But then I will buy all the physical CDs because oh, I'm that that's sort that's of person. Who buys physical there. Yeah. I buy physical <laughs> copies. Yeah, that's the best thing, you know, to support. If you have got bands that you like, you know, obviously any kind of listening to music. What I want is people to listen to music. So if Spotify is their thing, that's fine. But, you know, to buy the CDs and listen to Spotify, well, that's the ultimate because, you know, we're getting the best of both worlds there. Yeah, best of both. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, well, Jake, thank, thank you very much. It's been lovely to chat. Yeah. And you. Yeah. All right. Take care. And you take care. He's been Dave the Bard.
check out his music. It's it is folk, but it's very metal, very variant. Yeah, and I may be a folk. I may be a folk musician, but I've got the heart of a metal head. So there we are. He's got the heart of a metal head, and that's why he's on. The- <laughs> <laughs> he's been Dave the Pod. I've been Jake, your host from Jake's Metal and Cat. Of course, who else am I going to be? And I could just be. I could just be Jake. Yes, you can be Jake. I'm just Jake, and it's not called Jake's Metal Chat, it's just Jake. So it's Jake's Metal Chat, I'm Jake, your host. Uh, be sure to like this video, share it around, and subscribe. I don't know why you keep saying subscribe, most of you tend to do that anyway. I've got 289 subscribers now, which is brilliant, good. thank you for that. Yeah, it's yeah, good. And you don't have to subscribe to my channel, or even like my videos, just watching them is fine enough, but it just stops me from going completely insane, running up down my road saying the world's coming to an end. What else are we going to do? You know, <laughs> talk to our computer screens at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that computer screen. My eyes are bleeding after nine hours. <laughs> so he's been in the board. I've been Jake. You all have a lovely afternoon, evening, morning, wherever the hell you are in the world. It's still a nice afternoon for me. So I'm going to go for a walk. Nice and he's one. going to go walk with lovely dog, Oscar. Absolutely. See you all later. And keep later. the banner going. <laughs>